Uh, thanks for watching Chaos to Clarity. Boy, do we have a show for you today. Everything but the kitchen sink tomorrow. I mean, you name it, we're going to see it. All right, straight out to the satellite. Let me show you what's going on. Um, here's all of the ingredients for tomorrow's store. First of all, you have this. You have this boundary, right? That's kind of stalled. Let me turn this on here. You have this boundary that's stalled in here, right? From Texas. Out ahead of this, what do you have going on? You have these uh, southeasterly winds, right? Southwesterly winds, a lot of warm air here. And notice what's going on here. A lot of cold air coming on in. So you have a pretty big temperature contrast here going on out ahead of this boundary. And then I'm going to mark this. Energy. This short wave, this is going to round the bend. Your upper low that has all of the Arctic air comes southward as well. And what will end up happening is this upper low steers this piece of energy along this boundary. And all of a sudden, you've got a big storm that we're dealing with tomorrow. Now, this is exactly as we talked about back before Thanksgiving. Remember, we talked about how you're going to have this digging trough coming across the eastern part of the United States, and if you can get a little piece of energy to run out of the northern piece, you're going to have something. The only thing you don't have is cold air preceding this storm, so it's not going to be a big snow event. Of course, we updated the video last week, and we talked about there wasn't a huge amount of snow, but there's going to be some with this um, as we go forward. All right, let, let me show you how this is going to work. I want to show you the 500 millibar, and this is the classic setup here. Now, the only thing we're missing is a dome of cold air preceding the storm, but here's what's going on. That piece of energy, the key is this piece of energy has to outrun this digging shortwave, this upper low, because if it wouldn't, if they were moving at the same speed, it would just be a cold front pressing across the northeast, but uh, and that would be it. Now, there'd still be some soaking rain, but you wouldn't get nearly the amount of extreme weather you're going to get tomorrow. But this piece of energy is going to run out ahead of it. Watch as we go forward here. This is the American model. Doesn't matter. Both models are the same. This is this evening. European GFS, doesn't matter. Go tomorrow morning. You see what's going on? Uh, that's running out ahead of it. So what do you have going on here? Here's your upper low. This has the Arctic air, right? This is the actual storm, and you can see it. It's running out ahead of the main upper low. Watch it lift to the northeastward right here. There it goes. I'm going to stop this right here, 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. This whole trough now is going negatively tilted. What does that mean? It's tilted from a northeast or northwest to southeast, all right? So it's negatively tilted. That means you have all of the wind energy on this side. And this is a lot of wind energy coming northward here. So what you're going to do is, because this area is strengthening, you're going to see a storm take this track. And as it moves northward, it intensifies. But look at all of this energy on the eastern side of this trough. These are wind gusts. Uh, well, I'll show you the low-level jack in a second, but w watch how that just lifts northward. Watch how that s s moves right between Interstate 81 and 995 as it lifts northward. You see that? The uh, Your American model, same thing. So all of this energy lifts northward. Trough is negatively tilted. That's important. That means you're going to have some moisture thrown back into the cold air, and that's why you are going to have some snow with this on the front end side. But this is a ton of energy. It's like a bullwhip around this upper low. Look how that rotates northward. I want to show you how much wind is associated with this in the low levels. All right. Um, and it's a lot. Let me show it to you. Exit full screen. Let's go to this. This is what I want to show you. This is the low-level jet. These are the winds below 5,000 feet. All right. Watch how they increase in here. This is tomorrow morning. So you're looking at these areas in here already about 60 knots. Now, you're not going to get the... The, these kind of wind gusts necessarily in this area, but that shows you you have a lot of wind energy in the low levels of the atmosphere. So you're going to get a lot of gusts over 30, 40 miles per hour in here. Now, this is tomorrow morning. Watch how as that piece of energy rotates into this area and strengthens, watch how these winds strengthen. So this is 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Let's take you to 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Look at this. You start getting, you start getting again, below 5,000 feet and below, you're starting to get 75 knot winds in here. 
Look at this area across southeastern New England and southern New Jersey. You want to see something impressive? Watch the low-level jet in here between 1 and 7. Boom! Look at that. 1 and 7. Look at these winds coming from the eastern Long Island in the eastern parts of Maine. You're looking at gusts here between 90 and 95 knots. That's a tremendous amount of energy and wind here. Tremendous amount. At the very least, you're going to get wind gusts up over 60, I believe. Eastern Long Island, eastern Massachusetts, in the eastern Maine. I won't be shocked. You're going to get some, some wind gusts here offshore in some of these buoys over 70 miles per hour. I, 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 I'd be shocked if that didn't happen. But this is going to be a damaging wind event here. I think tomorrow evening. This is 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And you're not going to be able to mix all of this wind down. So you're looking between 80, 85, and this is 90 knots of wind. But you're going to be able to get over 60 mile per hour winds in here. I think you're looking at a damaging wind event here tomorrow evening. Providence, Boston, Portland, the Cape, the islands, central and eastern Long Island as well. You can see that belt of winds go through this area. There's one o'clock. Look how it goes across the area, and then it gets into down east Maine by 1 a.m. So I, I, I'm telling you, you're going to see a, a lot of wind and damaging winds in this area tomorrow, beginning tomorrow afternoon, maybe southern shore, but then tomorrow afternoon, central and eastern Long Island, and then tomorrow evening. Watch how this strength, look at that wind strengthen tomorrow evening. Now, this is all on the eastern side of our energy. I want to show you the surface map here and, and you can see what's coming. This is going to be a lot of soaking rain in here and we're also going to be looking at some snow. Let me put this on here and we'll uh, and then I'll show you the map exactly on, on how this is going to work. Watch as we go through. This is tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. Look at all that yellow going across um, uh, first Philadelphia in the morning, early to mid-afternoon New York City, tomorrow evening around Boston. Look at that rain going northward. Then, then on the back side of this storm, and we talked about this the other day uh, when we first did this, that you were going to get a snow event area in here. Now, most areas are not going to be anything more than a coating to an inch or two, but I would worry from Binghamton toward the Adirondacks, you can get three to six inches as colder air comes on in. The storm is going to end up being a bomb cyclone, but it doesn't really get going until it gets into New England here. Watch, you've got this, you've got a number of weak waves on here, but what will eventually become the main storm is down across the upstate of South Carolina. That is tomorrow morning. I have it circled there. And, and you can track it in here. Then by tomorrow afternoon, it's across ooh, central Virginia around Washington, D.C. The pressure's on this. Uh, probably. This is uh, 1,004. This is about 1,000 millibars. And then it starts showing up a little better by tomorrow evening right in there. You see it goes to 988. So it's strengthening a little late in the game. Uh, let me go back to this. It's, it's strengthening a little late in the game for much of any accumulating snow from uh, Pennsylvania, New York State on south. Um, you know, I like snow. I'm a big snow fan. But at, at this point, I just... I think it's strengthening a little too late and the precip ends as the cold air comes in. But there's going to be some snow. I'll show you that. And then I think there's going to be a little more as you get northward from Binghamton toward the Adirondacks. And then here comes the Arctic air. And by the way, there's going to be some big lake affect snow coming here. You, you have a lot of westerly winds here. So you're going to get those single bands coming off of Lake Erie and Ontario on Thursday. You're going to get all kind of thunder snow. I'd watch the heavy snow from about Dunkirk to about Orchard Park, probably stay south of Buffalo, may get into the South Towns, but not, not Buffalo proper. Uh, the other area to watch is between Watertown and Syracuse in the tug. They're going to get over a foot of snow. I'll show you the um, snowfall amounts here. So, I mean, and also what you're going to get with this, you're going to get a squall line that gets going in here tomorrow, right in here from uh, eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, 
and that goes right toward Boston and Long Island tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. You'll get a skinny squall line, may not have a lot of lightning with it or thunder, but even with that squall line, you're going to get damaging wind gusts. In fact, don't be surprised if there's a severe thunderstorm watch issued tomorrow uh, across parts of the mid-Atlantic tomorrow afternoon, all the way up in toward the Boston area. I can see it because of that skinny squall line. And we all we know there's a tremendous amount of wind with this. All right. Let me show you some forecast maps here so you know exactly uh, what we're going to be forecasting here as we uh, as we move uh, forward here. All right, let me show you the rainfall map that we're projecting here tomorrow um, across the uh, northeast. So here it is. So, uh, you know, general one to two inches here from uh, Burlington toward Harrisburg toward Washington, D.C., but a large area of about two to four inches of rain here. Um as we go through the the uh, through the afternoon hours here, so that's going to be quite a bit of rain with that, and that's going to cause some ponding of water uh, on the roadways here. So I'd be careful about uh, about if you're doing any traveling. I'll tell you what: if you can work from home tomorrow, I would absolutely suggest that if you can uh, work from home tomorrow, because I think this is going to be real nasty traveling right out of the gate in Philadelphia, and the tomorrow afternoon. From Philadelphia toward New York City, I, I, it's, traveling is not recommended. It really isn't because of all of this rain. All right, let me go back to the graphic here so you see it. So again, here's the rain, and then I want to show you the um, the severe weather threat uh, as well tomorrow. Uh, this is it. Uh, you could see it. Some risk. I think it's mostly going to be damaging winds in here. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be shocked if we had an isolated tornado or two, especially eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia in there. I would not be surprised at all. But the main threat is, is certainly going to be the damaging winds in here. Just to make sure, I want you to make sure, uh, I want to make sure you saw this, this rainfall map. There it is, the two to four from Bangor toward New York City. There's the severe weather. Uh, also, let's talk really quickly about the wind. The wind with this is going to be very impressive. Now, a lot of the wind that you see here from Burlington, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Charleston, this is going to be on the back side of the storm, all right? The worst of the wind is going to be on the front side, from eastern North Carolina all the way to eastern Maine. This is where we have gusts 50 to 70 miles per hour. And I'll tell you what, I think this area in here, in here, central and eastern Long Island, you're going to see a lot of 60-plus and near 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And I bet you, I'd be willing to bet, offshore of the islands and the Cape, someone goes up over 75 miles per hour tomorrow with a wind gust. I mean, these get, winds are going to be very strong. There's going to be, uh, I, I think, a threat of down trees and power lines with this. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be able to mix all of these winds down, but you're going to get some. And I think the winds are so strong that I'd really worry about that about power outages here. In fact, we are forecasting that, that we, we are going to be at least running the risk for some power outages here. Uh, localized in yellow, more regional, once you get toward Boston, Portland, Bangor, and southern parts of uh, Nova Scotia. That's going to be a real bad setup here. As far as the snow is concerned, as I mentioned, I I don't think this is a big snow event. I, I, I updated this. Uh, it was last week. I said, you see a lot of coating in an inch or two? And I think that's going to be the story here. Now, if anybody gets three to six inches, I think it's this zone in here. From Binghamton, maybe toward Utica, toward the, uh, uh, toward the um, maybe up toward the St. Lawrence Seaway in here. Probably east of Watertown, east of Rochester and Syracuse. I think this is an area... I bet you you're going to see three to six, and there's locally going to be eight to ten in here in the highest elevations. I would watch for that. But I think for a lot of places, this is going to be a coating to an inch or two, even around Pittsburgh, coating to an inch. I could even see it in State College. Uh, we have flurries here. I could see how we get a coating. Uh, but certainly, you know, it, it's going to get windy and very cold Wednesday night. Any wet roads are going to freeze, and there's going to be some big-time travel delays Thursday morning. So, you know, get ready. This is a big storm that's going to be forming. It will end up being a bomb cyclone because it's going to go from a, a thousand millibars um, uh, across, maybe around a thousand millibars across the upstate of South Carolina, and then uh, Wednesday morning, by the time it gets to the St. Lawrence Seaway, it's going to be at around 973 millibars. That's more than 24 uh, 24 millibars. Uh, 
in in a 24-hour period of time. It's a close call, but I think it's probably going to meet the criteria. So, I mean, major travel delays. I would not be on the roads tomorrow afternoon from New York City toward Philadelphia, toward Washington, D.C. in the afternoon. The morning's not a picnic either in those areas, but the afternoon, it's a windswept rain. Watch that squall line that's going to get going tomorrow afternoon. I bet you there's some severe thunderstorm watches at least in the southeastern Virginia and eastern North Carolina, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was issued all the way up in the southeastern New England with that squall line. There may not be a lot of thunder with it, but there's going to be damaging winds, so that's a close call. All right, if you have any questions or comments, you can contact me on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at Accurano, but get ready. I mean, you want a definition of a bad weather day tomorrow in the Northeast? I think what we're getting tomorrow is the perfect definition. All right, thanks for watching. And again, you can contact me on X. I'm at Accurano.